Hello and welcome to this video tutorial on basic PC maintenance. At the end of this tutorial, you'll be able to use different utilities and applications on your computer which will enable the computer to run more efficiently. Here is a list of the topics I'm going to cover with a timeline of where they occur in the video. Feel free to skip ahead to any of the areas you're particularly interested in. OK, let's get started with Windows updates. At the end of this section, you will be able to check for and install the latest Windows updates from Microsoft and be able to set your system to automatically check for these updates. To locate Windows updates, let's click on the Start menu, select Control Panel, select System and Security, and we'll see Windows updates here about halfway down. If we click on Check for Updates, we can see if there are any available updates to download for your system. Here we see it says no important updates are available, but there are two optional updates. Let's just see what these are. Okay, I'm not going to install them, so I can just go cancel here. Now, to ensure that automatic updates are turned on, let's just click on Change Settings. You see here with my computer, it will install automatic updates as soon as it finds them. There are other options here to check for updates but let me choose whether to download and install them but I take the lazy way out and I just go install updates automatically and I'd recommend you do that too. So we just click on OK then and uh, that setting will be saved. Temporary internet files. At the end of this section, you will be able to locate and delete temporary internet files, cookies and history files which slow down your browsing experience. So let's open our Internet Explorer. We, this, is the, this is Internet Explorer 9, so our tools are located over here in the little circular icon. So let's click on Tools and go to Internet Options. Here we see the browsing history. If we click on Delete, it gives us the option to delete several things like temporary internet files, cookies and your browsing history. So we tick these or any of the other options that you wish and just click on delete. We see here I get the message that the Internet Explorer has finished deleting the selected browsing history. So I can just X off that and we're done. Removing unnecessary programs. At the end of this section, you will be able to access the list of programs installed on your system and delete any unwanted or unnecessary programs, toolbars or applications which slow down your system. To access these programs, again we click on the Start menu, select Control Panel, select Programs and Uninstall a program. This gives us the list of programs currently installed on our system. If you, if you see any that you haven't used in years or any toolbars which really slow down your browsing experience, all you have to do is select the, the individual program, right click on it and go uninstall. It will ask you to confirm the removal of the program and just click yes. Okay, now, if you refresh your list, you'll see that the program you've just removed no longer appears there, which is what we want. Antivirus software. At the end of this section, you will be able to download and install free antivirus software and schedule it to scan your system automatically. The first thing you should do is go back to your list of programs we covered in the last section and remove any outdated antivirus software. It is important to only have one antivirus software or maybe one malware check on your system at any one time. I would recommend Malwarebytes Anti-Malware and Microsoft Security Essentials these work together to keep your system clean and rid of any antivirus, malware or any other threats that you might, that you might get exposed to. To download Malwarebytes, just open your browser and search for it. So we type in Malwarebytes Anti-Malware. Um, I generally download from this site because I find it very secure and very reliable. So all you have to do is, once the site opens, click on Download Now. 
they will ask you whether you want to save the file or run it. So I would recommend just running the executable and uh, this and follow the steps and it will automatically install Malwarebytes anti-malware onto your system. Now once it's installed, if you open up the application, it, it indicates that my database is outdated by 12 days, so let's update it. Now let's click OK. Here we can run a full scan on our system, which I would recommend. You select the drive you want to scan. Now if you have any external drives or op optical disks or anything else installed, you should also scan those as well. So just click on scan and the scan will begin. Now this does take quite some time, particularly if you haven't scanned for a while. And um, at the end of it, it will give you a list of any threats or viruses or an, any malware that it finds. And it will give you a, a click on option to remove them from your system. Usually afterwards, it will require you to restart your system. And uh, that gets rid of any of these um, threats to your system. OK, I'm just going to abort this because I don't have the time right now to, to run this check. The second antivirus program I would recommend is Microsoft's own Microsoft Security Essentials, which is a free um, antivirus software. To find it, just uh, go back to your browser and type in Microsoft, Microsoft Security Essentials. Again, we can just download it from download.cnet.com. Um, again, follow the same procedure. Click on the download link and run the executable. Once it's downloaded and installed, you can check again for updates. Here it tells me my, my virus and spyware definition status is up to date. Again, you've got scan options, a quick scan, a full scan or a custom scan. I would recommend to run your full scan, particularly if you haven't scanned your machines for a while. With Microsoft Security Essentials, you can schedule it to run at particular days or particular times, um, and this option's here. So I would run a quick scan every week at around 2 a.m. in the morning, and you can set these things to run whatever is, um, whatever is appropriate to you. Okay. Disk cleanup. At the end of this section, you will be able to navigate to the system tools and run the disk cleanup utility. Disk cleanup removes unnecessary files from the computer, thereby freeing up disk space. To find disk cleanup, we go to the start menu, select all programs, accessories, system tools, and here is our disk cleanup. We double click on it and it will open. When it opens, as you see, it checks or calculates how much space you will be able to free on your hard drive after the cleanup is complete. OK. The cleanup utility says that I can free up 190 megabits of disk space on my C drive by deleting any downloadable program files, temporary internet files, offline web pages. I can also empty my recycle bin get rid of any temporary files. OK. So here, by, by cleaning up my system files, I can free up 190 megabits of free space. So to do this, let's just click on Clean Up System Files. Now, if I click OK, the utility will run, and all of those files will be deleted. So let's just click OK. Yes, I'm sure. Disk Defragmenter. At the end of this section, you will be able to navigate to the system tools and run the Disk Defragmenter utility. The Disk Defragmenter rearranged fragmented files or broken up files that are on your hard drive, which enable, it, enable the hard drive itself to work more efficiently. To locate the Disk Defragmenter, we go to the Start menu, All Programs, Accessories, System Tools, and click on Disk Defragmenter. Before we defragment the drive, if we click on Analyze Disk, the system 
will tell us if the disk requires fragmenting. So let's just do that. OK, the analysis result shows that uh, the disk is 4% fragmented. So um, we will go ahead and defragment the disk. Before that, you can see that you can actually schedule the defragmenter to run um, you know, whenever you want. Here I have run mine weekly on Wednesdays at 1 in the morning, and you can also select the disk. So that's a, that's a handy utility, just to have it running um, so every so often, because defragmenting your disk is not something that you think of too often. So if I click defragment disk now, it should go ahead and uh, clean up and fragment my disk. This does take time, so I will pause the recording again. The device manager. At the end of this section, you will be able to access the device manager and check that all drivers on the system are up to date. And you, can be, you would also be able to install the latest device driver if required to do so. You can access the device manager in two ways. If you have the My Computer icon on your desktop, right-click it and select Manage. It will open up the computer management utility. Alternatively, we go to Start Menu, the Control Panel, under System and Security, and we'll see the administrative tools are located down here, and click on Computer Management. In Computer Management, we see the Device Manager listed here to the left. Just select your Device Manager, it lists all the devices on your system and if any of them show like a yellow asterisk or a star or question mark that would indicate that the driver is not up to date so what you should do is click on it and it, sa it says here the drivers for this device are not installed maybe I don't have a second PCI bus in any case what you should do is click on update driver and it will ask you, do you want to either search the dri for the drivers on a disk or search it through the internet. You can select whichever is appropriate for you and install the updated driver. The virtual memory. At the end of this section, you will be able to increase the virtual memory of your system. The virtual memory affects how fast your system can carry out tasks and increasing it will improve the performance. It's actually like adding more physical RAM to your system. To find out what the virtual memory is set at, we go to the control panel, system and security, and click on system. To the left here, we see advanced system settings. So we select it, and under performance, you see that virtual memory is included here, so we click on settings. Again, click on the advanced tab and click on change the virtual memory. I've already customized mine and increased my own virtual memory to 4 gigs and that's more than adequate for my system. But here, you have to, when you're changing yours, you have to give an initial size and a maximum size. You see here for my system, it says the maximum size was 8 gigs and recommended was 2878. I set mine to 4. You can set them to whatever value that you want. So when we, set, when we choose our settings, we press OK and OK all the way back to apply the settings. Now, if you change your virtual memory, you will require a system restart before the changes come into effect. So you should go and do that. In this video tutorial, I covered installing Windows updates, deleting temporary internet files, removing any unnecessary programs or applications, installing free antivirus software to protect your system, utilities like disk cleanup, disk defragmenter, and check disk. I showed you how to access the device manager to check for updated drivers and increase your virtual memory to improve the speed of your system. I hope you found it useful and informative. Please feel free to leave any comments, feedbacks or suggestions to help me improve it. Thank you for viewing.